Hi again, you're watching the fourth part in a series of videos where we set up a virtual Linux home lab. In this video, we'll be cloning our system image VM into a workstation role for our lab network. This workstation will pretty much be our control node to access and administer the other VMs with SSH and Ansible. We will set up a graphical environment with a few helpful programs installed as well. So just like in the previous video where we set up NetServer, we'll do the same cloning process for workstation. So once again, right click on system image and click clone. We'll name our clone workstation and set the MAC address policy to generate a new MAC address. Then click next and we'll make our clone a full clone just like before and hit clone. When that's done, we'll change a few settings to make this workstation a little bit faster. So go over to settings, system, and we're gonna boost up the base memory to about four gigabytes. So that should be good. And next we'll set the number of CPUs. Two CPUs should be all right, but you can do more if you wish. I'm actually going to set four. And for our display, we're gonna add some more video memory. In fact, we'll make it the max of 128 megabytes to make sure our graphical environment runs smoothly. The last important thing I'd like to point out is that we're still indeed connected to LabNet and that's actually all we'll need to get online and communicate with the other hosts on our network. So we'll just click OK to that and what we're going to do now is actually start up NetServer if you haven't already. So you can start in a headless mode so you don't actually have to look at it. And then we can start Workstation. We'll need NetServer running at all times when we want network access for anything connected to LabNet. So now you know why we're doing that. So now that workstation has started up, make sure to first of all log in, and just like before, we're going to change the host name with sudo hostname ctl hostname and workstation, just like that. And once we've done that, we can also use sudo su dash to get a login shell. And just to coast on the safe side, we're once again going to run yum update. And so all of that looks good. And next we're going to install a couple of package groups. So you're going to want to type in yum group install and in quotes development tools. And you won't need quotes for the other two. We're just going to want base dash x and fonts with a capital F. Okay, so we'll just say yes to that, and this will install the tools we need to build the VirtualBox Guest Edition kernel modules and also some basic packages for a GUI. So we'll come back once that's been installed. Okay, now with our package groups installed, we're going to need to install just a couple of more regular packages. So just run yum install gdm gnome terminal nautilus firefox and gedit. Okay, we'll just say yes to that. And now we need GDM so that we can log into our graphical session and the rest of the tools are there to just make it actually usable as a workstation. So if we need to look things up, we have Firefox handy. If we want to start using the terminal, we have a graphical terminal to do that. And we also have a file manager. So all of those things will definitely make this a lot more of a comfortable experience. So we'll just allow that to install and come back when it's finished. Okay, now that the packages are ready, we'll need to change our default system D target to graphical, just like this. System CTL set default graphical dot target. Just like that. And there we go. We can also jump right into the graphical session without rebooting with system CTL isolate graphical and just hit enter to that and this should take us straight into the login manager. So now we can just log in as admin and we should be right in. Now for the best experience we should install the VirtualBox guest editions just like this. First head up to the top after hitting your host key and go to devices and get the VirtualBox guest edition image. Sometimes it might ask you to download, so we'll just do that. And it'll take a second. And then we'll insert it into our VM. 
You should now get an automatic prompt that asks if you'd like to run the software. So just say run and type in your password. And this should start building the VirtualBox Guest Edition kernel modules. So it'll take a little bit to rebuild the init ramfs and do a couple of other things, and then we can move on. Okay, cool, so we just finished building, so we can just press enter to quit. And you might have even noticed this already, because the kernel modules get loaded right away, but now we can move our mouse cursor inside and outside of the window without having to use the host key. So that's pretty cool, but for best results, we should reboot. So we'll do that, and it'll take a moment. And what we'll notice now is instead of getting dropped into the command line environment, we get a graphical display manager. So that's pretty cool. And so now we can just log in again. And yeah, now we have the kernel modules installed, so we can do all kinds of cool things like resize the window to change the screen resolution. You can change the resolution now much more easily to have a more comfortable viewing experience. We can do a couple of other things too, I guess. We can, let's see here, make the font bigger. We can ping our own host name, workstation, and notice that it gets attached to the domain labnet. So that's pretty cool, and the same thing should happen if we ping net server. So yeah, we're pretty much able to access the other hosts on our network as well as access the internet. I mean, that was already proven since we were able to install packages but we can also test that with ping. So as you can see, it's working well. So I just wanted to show that off, that's pretty cool. And that'll be all for this video. So stay tuned for part five where we clone a couple more VMs so that we have some hosts to configure on our network. So that'll be about it for this video. I hope it helped. See ya and thanks for watching.